Today, you and I are going to be taking on Newcastle United in a rebuild because this team right now is the one that everyone is looking at and thinking, hold up, are they going to get European football? That might just happen. And they have some great players in their squad. I want to go ahead and take this team to the top of world football. This could be a plan that Newcastle United could possibly follow. And I'll try and keep the transfer somewhat realistic. I'm not just going to go in and buy Mbappe, lads. Let's see if we can somehow like realistically rebuild Newcastle in the way they have been doing it so far. And on top of it, I think my editor will be once again very happy because it's time again to rebuild his club. Biscuit, we're taking on Newcastle. Are you happy, pal? Ah! Starting off with the squad right here, we have Alexander Isak, the new transfer up top. We have Sven Botman, another one coming into the club for Newcastle. Nick Pope and Target. Those are the four big transfers that Newcastle have gone for. But can we really say big transfers? I would say Isak, yes, he already had somewhat of a big name. Then you also had Botman. But when we look at their ratings in FIFA terms and also their rankings in terms of football players all around the world or talents in general, you wouldn't put these guys up there with the likes of Mbappe and those guys that Newcastle have been linked with. So for me, I look at the squad and I think, okay, they're not going overboard with the transfers. It is extremely surprising to see how they've gone about it because everyone thought this is what they're going to do. And it never stops. This is what everyone thought is going to happen. The money just never stopped. But Newcastle just went... Uh, yeah, that's it. So I'm going to hold myself back too. So let's start off with the first season. I think there are a couple of positions that I would love to improve straight away. But I do already love the look of this team from the get-go. I think this 4-2-4 formation might be absolutely deadly for us. Let's have fun with it. So without going overboard, we're bringing in one player into the team for this season, and I'm just gonna go ahead and sim throughout the whole season. Just one transfer, and it is the former Lazio defender that joined Real Betis. It is Luis Felipe. Yes, he is gonna come into the squad for Dan Byrne plus 20.5 million. I think that's only fair, and he will take over the position of share. Wow, that rhymed, and I didn't even wanna go after that. Where the hell is he now? Please find him quick, Jenny. You can do this. Yes, Luis Felipe. There he is. The Brazilian takes over that position. Coming in with 72 pace, 80 defending, 73 physicality. Four-star weak foot, 25 years old, six foot two. Bringing in some experience into the squad, which is something I like to see. And that's it. I'm done with transfers for the season. I'm going straight in. Newcastle first year. Let's see how the team does. The first season has come to an end and Newcastle United are ninth. And as we take a look at this league table, guys, I want you to go ahead and tell me as well. What did you think of the first game between Ecuador and Qatar? Was it offside or not? I think it should have counted. Honestly, it wasn't offside. I was actually pissed when I saw it because when they, the moment that, the moment of contact that they showed for the World Cup VAR, it's the, it's the moment where the goalkeeper punches the ball. So the, the Ecuador player doesn't touch the ball. So it was it shouldn't have counted for offside. And that this is the thing. People were already talking about like Qataris paying Ecuador to go ahead and match fix the game, allegedly. And then you see that in the first goal that happens, the first VAR that turns up on the tournament, showcasing the home team playing. I was like, yeah, this is this is weird, man. But I did guess that it that the game would end 2-0. So I got it right. I'm all good. Now, Newcastle United coming in ninth in the first season. I'm actually pretty happy with that, considering that we haven't gone too heavy on transfers. And we do see Nick Pope getting injured. That sucks. Luis Felipe gone up to an 81. Botman 83, Gimaraes up to an 84, Joy Linton has gone up in his rating, Wilson has gone up, Alexander Isak has gone up, Samaxima and Almiron now in right wing and left wing positions, Trips still 84 rated, which is lovely to see, a couple of players have actually forced their way, their way out of the club already, John Joe Shelby and Longstaff are gonna go, Wilson 15 and 4, Void, what? He has scored more goals, <laughs> this guy has scored more goals off the freaking bench than Alexander Isak in a starting 11. That is shocking. Isak only coming in with a 10 and 1. Hey, I thought you were good, pal. And I got to tell you, I've used Isak many times in the past and he was always incredible. Miggy Almiron. Man, can we talk about this guy real quick? 
how insane is he for Newcastle right now? Like last season, I think it was Joel Linton's revival, right? All of a sudden he plays from striker, goes into midfield and is like the best midfielder in the Prem. And then Almiron is the second coming of Messi all of a sudden. What the hell is going on at Newcastle, man? Hey, I gotta say, their coach is getting some mad things out of his players. That's for sure. He's getting amazing performances out of them. So congratulations to Eddie Howe. You're doing an amazing job, pal. But I will do better than you. Yep, I told you right now. Sorry, pal. Hey, Newcastle might have brought in target for that left back position. I ain't accepting that. I'm going for a player that just played in the World Cup for Ecuador. I am going for the main man himself, Estupinian, coming into the squad right now for 33 million. Yes, that is the value we have to pay for him to come into the squad. He is rated at, whoa, 82. Really? Are you actually 82 rated, Estupinian? No, he's 81. Okay, so he's probably an 82 in like a left wing back position type thing. Oh, no, he's not. What the? I'm very confused right now. I don't know what the hell happened there, but I guess we'll just take it. Estupinian goes into that left back position for us, lads. Very excited to have him in the squad. And I think that is a massive improvement for the team. And I got to say, as much as I love the fact that Almiron is doing so well for Newcastle, guys, I ah, can't even bring myself to say it. I think I want a new right wing. How dare you? I feel like I'm breaking up with my girlfriend or something. What the hell is going on? Chuk Wueze is coming into the squad. Guys, 35.6 million. And with that, that's the last transfer that we're going to make. He's coming in at the rating of 80. Oh, hold up a second. There might be a battle going on. It might be a 79, you know. No, he is actually an 80. Does he go up in the right wing spot? Okay, he's going to go up to an 81 rating. He has taken over the spot of Almiron. Don't you worry. I am not kicking Almiron out, okay? He's going to be an amazing backup for our wingers. He's going to be the only one on the bench that can play on the wings. He'll be fine. Trust me. He'll be okay. I love Miggy in real life right now. He's doing incredible things. But right now, in terms of FIFA, I need players that can perform if immediately. And for that, I need Almiron now as a great backup on the bench. Hey, maybe he performs just as well as Chris Wood last season. That could happen. Who knows? But... Here comes the season now. This is the squad I'm going to go with, man. I'm not going to make any more changes. Newcastle, we're going step by step. This season, my friends, we come in into that seventh spot and 59 points. I mean, yeah, I mean it's better, right? It's better. Last season, we came in ninth, so I can't really complain about that too much. And in first place, we see Liverpool. Come on, you'll never walk alone. Let's move ahead into our squad itself and see how the lads have done so we are looking at pope struggling luis felipe getting injured no no felipe why uh that probably ruined this season i'm gonna give him another chance come on felipe you can do better than that i believe in you trips still 84 man it's incredible he went up to 85 down to 84 again now so i'm assuming he's gonna struggle with his rating chukvu He's going to go up in his rating once he's turned into a right wing. He's stuck up to an 85. So I maximize the 86 rated player. I'm going to give myself a rule of not being able to buy players that are higher rated than the ones that I already have. So let's keep that in mind. And then uh, Nick Pope probably is another one that we need to replace. So possibly looking at goalkeeper slash right back possibly. I mean, as long as he's 84, I'm okay. But if he's going down already, maybe we need to get rid of trips as well. Hey! Say that again. Even though I really like him. Almiron got up to an 81. Hey, that's good to see. I mean, that's pretty impressive to see as well. I like that. So let's go back into the squad here and see how the lads have done. We have gotten ourselves into a position where 27 and 6 are coming in for Callum Wilson and 26 and 4 for Alexander Isak. The Swedish man is doing exceptionally well right now for the team. At some maximum with the 17 and 8. That is some good stuff there. And Gimares coming in with the 10 assists and 3 goals. Now, guys, we are not done yet. The reason why the menu is green is because we have a cup final coming up. We are playing against Feyenoord in the... Uh, conference league final which i didn't expect to see but apparently you get conference league football when you come in ninth in the premier league i did not know that so here we are fine 
against us. Can we do well here? Felipe obviously injured. He's going to be replaced by, by Shea, I'm assuming. Obviously, Feyenoord have a bunch of great players in there, especially Kirk Chu that I really like in real life. But here we go. First trophy win for Newcastle. And yes, it is. Callum Wilson and Sir Maxima. Newcastle have done it. We have gotten ourselves our first trophy. And that is great progression for the team. First big trophy secured. And now we can confidently move forward and do even better in the future. This is what I wanted to see. Natural progression. Not just jumping up to new heights immediately but slowly progressing into exactly where we need to go. The injury for Luis Felipe is a bit worrying, but hopefully next season it'll be all right. Transfers coming in for the next season just about now. Nick Pope has requested a transfer. Yes, he wants to leave the club. So it's about perfect for us. Luis Maximiano coming in to take over his spot. And Dubravka, I'm sorry, pal. You're not going to get a chance in this team for now. Maximiano, Portuguese player, joined Lazio, dropped off to the bench and possibly going to get another move anytime soon if he doesn't go ahead and start playing for that team. A uh, bit of a shame for him, but he's only 25 years old at this stage. So I'm very happy to have him in the squad. And uh, that's the first transfer for the season. I want to go ahead and bring in more. Aaron Van Bissaka. Yes, the Manchester United bench player that Eric Ten Hag doesn't even take serious anymore. He openly came out and said he wants another right back. Even though Dalo has been doing really well and Van Bissaka is his backup, he's like, no, you're not even good enough as a backup. So he is signing and he's going to put on that Newcastle shirt as an 83 rated player at the age of 26. And I'm going to revive this man's career because he deserves it. At some point, he was unbelievable in that right back position. There were discussions about him being as good as the likes of Trent and Reese James at the time when he was at Crystal Palace because of his defensive abilities. And now we want to give him a new lease of life. He comes in into that right back spot, lads. This transfer has been completed. I'm very excited. So let's go after it. I hope we can do really, really well for this season. And also, Joel Linton is not going to be playing. It's going to be Willock playing in that centre midfield position. From this point on, his stats actually look very impressive as well. Whoever does better gets to play. Simple as that. This time around, look at the background. It's all red or orange, whatever the color is, because we are in the Europa League final, lads. And we are here with an 88-rated Alexander Isak. The 32-year-old Wilson, who is probably going to be replaced or most definitely going to be replaced next season. Chukwu up to an 85 rating. Samaxima 87. Gimarish 87. Botman 87. Luis Felipe back from his injury and hopefully continuing to grow. 28 years old. Whew. Maybe we get like, what, maybe three more good years out of him. Possibly four. That could be enough to get him to like an 88. Bambi Sack up to an 84. Hey, career revived. That's what I do, lads. I'm a great coach. And then in the left back position, Estupinian up to an 85. Maximiano 86. And the bench is looking good. Joel Inton has lost the battle against Willock by the looks of things. But let's go ahead and take a look at the squad hub here. I haven't looked at the Premier League, uh, league table as well. Alexander Isak has been beaten once again by Callum Wilson. This man is 33, actually. And uh, it's sad, but we will have to let him go and replace him, even though he has been performing unreal for us. Alexander Isak has to pick it up now. And uh, Chukwu, Sam Maxima, Bruno Guimaraes, all these guys have done incredible this season. Very impressed with every single one of them. And in the league table, uh, we are going to be up against, let's see. Oh no, which position are we going to be in? Because in the uh, Europa League final, we're up against Napoli. So we have won the Conference League last season, could win the Europa League this season. This is working out perfectly. The progression is literally going step by step and I love it. Emirates FA Cup is not what I wanted to see, but we can take a look at it. Manchester United have won it. We have come in sixth. Sixth position. That's not too bad. I think I'm happy with that. I mean, if we win the Europa League, we do get Champions League football. Oh, please. Oh, please make it happen. Here we go. Bang. Oh, wrong button. Now. Yes. Let's go, lads. 2-1 victory. Newcastle United is playing Champions League football in the next season. It's incredible. It's beautiful. 
It's Newcastle. One Englishman is walking back into England once again. AS Roma's Tammy Abraham is the man I'm signing for this season to replace Callum Wilson, my friends. He is going to be very important for us. 40 million plus Callum Wilson for this man to come into the team. And he comes in at an 85 rating. Same rating as Chukwu. So that is looking very good. Now, Willock, I appreciate you. Joel Inton, I appreciate you. But just like Almiron, we have to put these players onto the bench, which means Willock will be replaced. The blood in my veins! We belong together! Another transfer needs to come in for the team that has won the Europa League and the Conference League back-to-back. -back. If we could win the Champions League this season, that would be some story, wouldn't it? I'm excited about this one. It is Lovro Mayer, the Croatian midfielder coming into the team. And lads, I genuinely think Croatia has a good chance to upset a lot of people again. But he comes into our squad, plays in League 1, and now he plays for us. Joined Real Betis by the looks of things to then join Newcastle United. Once again, I feel like this is somewhat of a realistic rebuild so far. I want to know what you guys think, but I do think this is probably one of the more realistic ways that uh, Newcastle United will probably go about it in terms of rebuilding this club without going too crazy so that people don't get upset. And they do it in like a financially stable way without overspending. Meyer coming in, he's a center mid, 85 rated at this stage, which I'm really happy to see. And now the lowest rated players in our team are Luis Felipe and Van Bissaka. So they better step it up because we are a Champions League club now. And I want to win that goddamn thing at some point. Lads, this dream might actually come true. We have beaten Leipzig. In the quarterfinals, I think. And we're now up against Chelsea. Can we freaking do this? Can we get there? Back to back. All the trophies. 3-1 victory. Come on, Newcastle. Yes! It's incredible. We have done it. We have done it. <laughs> this might just be the best rebuild we've ever done. Just because of the storyline. Not overspending, right? Not going just crazy with the money. Going ahead and following a plan, making some realistic signings, not going over the head. Like, I don't think any of these are unrealistic if you consider where Newcastle are sat right now in the Premier League league table and how much money they have and what the, where the project is probably going to go to. I mean, listen to Jurgen Klopp, his uh, press conferences and also Pep Guardiola. These guys are already admitting that Newcastle is coming. This team will be great at some point. The question is when. So we have won the Conference League. We have won the Europa League. And now back to back, three times, we could be winning European titles if we go ahead and beat AC Milan right here, right now. I am genuinely excited. This is going to be so much fun for me. Now the team, 90 on Sam Maxima, 91 on Alexander Isak. Tammy coming in with a plus two, I believe, throughout the season. Same as our right wing. Let's go. Lovro Mayer up to his 86. That's only a plus one. Maraj only a plus one, I believe, too, or maybe even a plus two. Sven Botman injured, uh, but I think he'll be back in time. I think he is back in time. I mean, I can use the cheat engine to bring him back. I think I want to because, like, we spent so much time to get this guy to this point, this entire team to this point. Now that we have access to the cheat engine, it would just be a shame to not have him for this game. All right, guys, I hope you're okay with that. Estupinian is here with the 87 rating because I really want to show you how good he is in game. Luis Felipe with the 85 rating, lowest rated player in our team. Van Bissak coming in with the 86 and Maximiano with the 87. I got to say, this team looks incredible and I don't think there's anything unrealistic about it. Tammy Abraham returning into the Premier League to play for Newcastle. I could easily see that happen. Chukwueze, easy. Uh, Van Bissaka, why not? Genuinely, why not? I mean, of course, uh, actually, I know why not because Trips is actually insane. Uh, <laughs> Lovro Mayar in that centre midfield position. I mean, with him, it might be the case of like being too bad instead of being too good for the team. Luis Felipe, easy transfer in my opinion. Botman is obviously great. Estupinian could be an easy one done as well. Maximiano sat on the bench on Lazio, still a very high potential player as well. So I like what we have done here, guys. I think we have done a great job and I'm genuinely excited to see where we finish in the Premier League. We might have not won the Premier League. I don't think we have. That was one of the goals that I set myself. But, whoa. Eighth. Did not expect that one bit. I thought we were flying through this. So, if we don't win the Champions League this season, we don't even qualify for Champions League or Europa League. We come straight into the Conference League. That 
is a joke. Horrible. <laughs> I'm glad we are in the Champions League final then. Let's see the performances before we dive into that game. We have ourselves 24 and 5. Tammy Abraham showing how it's done. Chukwu with the 39, no, 29 goal contributions. Alexander Isak with the 23. Sam Maxima with the 12 and 6. Lovro coming in with a great season right here from that center midfield position. And Guimaraes with eight assists this time around. Guys. It's about time for us to take on AC Milan in the Champions League final. This is the moment you have been waiting for. And also, my editor Biscuit. Here we go. AC Milan coming in with Rafa Leao, De Ketelar, Gonzalez, Kukchu, Kone, uh, Tonali, Tomori, Konza, Benacer, Hernandez, Magnon. Benacer playing as a right back. Hmm. Don't know how I feel about this, but the rest of the starting 11 looks incredible. AC Milan and Newcastle United up against each other. We're seeing the preview of what could happen. Charles de Ketelar, he's the man that I need to stop in that striking position. Maldini, my God, what a player he was. If you guys are as old as I am, you saw Maldini play. He was legendary, but here we are now, my friends. We need to focus on this matchup. I want... Tonali to not touch that trophy. Let's make it happen. I like the kits. These, what is it? White and green? Uh, this doesn't look bad, you know. It's not Newcastle. I mean, for me, I, when I think of Newcastle, I don't think of white and green. What's the significance behind that? Oh, let's go. Guimaraes. Do you say Guimaraes or do you say Bruno Guimaraes? Go on. Okay, so what I can tell so far is both of my strikers are not fast. Tammy Abraham and Alexander Isak with no pacing behind. So we'll have to play one twos. Oh, that's a good ball. The Kitelar, and that is my goalkeeper flying about the place. Great first chance for AC Milan, but hey, the Kitelar, we're not going to make happen what happened in that preview. Bambi Saka, the spider. Look at him. Look at him. Of course, he gets it. Let's move. We have a player running. Alan Samaxima. Sam Aksima up against Tomori. Tomori, the best English defender that has not been taken to the World Cup. And see, that's what he does. Gareth Southgate, are you paying attention? Oh, wow. The recovery pace on that one was ridiculous. Estupinian, just incredible recovery pace, man. Nice. With it back to his opponent there. There goes Alexander. Isak and Magnon is just an absolute maniac. I don't know how he saves that. That's some lovely movement here. Oh my god. AC Milan is causing me a lot of problems here. And Botman has failed. And if you guys didn't know, Botman actually, before joining Newcastle, uh, AC Milan wanted him too. So that's quite an interesting dynamic here that we are experiencing. Yes, okay. First half has been survived. They are playing really well. We had our chances. I do think we will get more in the second half for sure. And the XG is 0 0.7 for AC Milan, only 0 0.4 for us. So Maxima. Oh, he somehow gets past this man. I don't know how the hell he did it, but hey, we'll take it. Inside one more. Sammy! Ah, oh, mate, Magnol just needs to chill out, man. I need to take the perfect shot to beat that guy. Sam Maxima, cross coming in. Near post, header, and again, and again, and again, Tammy Abraham. I thought I had to come up with the perfect goal, but no. We just have to take a scrappy one. Just because he's as tall as he is, he's able to go ahead and stop Magnol from doing his job. Was that a foul? I don't know. Let's take a look at it. I mean, you you could argue it's a foul, honestly. Don't we think it is? I kind of feel bad. If we had VAR in FIFA 23, this one probably would have called off, but it didn't. Oh, Botman with the long legs. Look at that. Beautiful. Mayer down to the right. We have Van Bissaka. Van Bissaka inside. Lovely movement. Over to... Sa Maxima, this is all I want to see. Sa Maxima, ooh, I like it. Go on, inside, yes, lovely ball. Maya loses that too easily. But gets it back. Straight back, inside. No way. 
No freaking way did he just score that. Now, that is a Champions League win-worthy goal. Because if that ever happened in real life, I'm telling you right now, we would see the replay of this a thousand times over. It reminds me of the header of Messi against Manchester United. Obviously not the same type of angle, but that goal is jokes. I do not understand how he gets that ball on top. That's ridiculous. My man did a 360 header, man. The ball's coming in from behind. He sees it somehow and then heads it perfectly. Tammy Abraham is goated. Absolutely goated. Oh, now AC Milan want to take it a bit more serious. Sven Botman. Let's go, buddy. Go on. Down the wing. Bambi Saka. I see someone in the center. It is a header from Isak straight onto the crossbar. Vambi Saka can cross the ball. Wow, this is great. Oh, wow. Hold on. Charles de Ketelar, Botman. <laughs> what a tackle. I got to say, Estupinian and Botman, both incredible in this game. Like, absolutely nuts the way they are defending. Estupinian again. Gets the ball, runs forward, deserves man of the match in my eyes. It is done. Newcastle United have won the Champions League. We have done it, lads, with a beautiful, realistic amount of progress that we have seen. I mean, Conference League, Europa League, Champions League, all back-to-back. -back. Unbelievable journey. And we did not manage to win the Prem. Yes, yes, I will have to put that out there, but... This team would very much be capable of doing that in this next season. I am so impressed with certain players. Again, as I said, Botman and Estupinian in the defense were unbelievable. Botman with his long legs was able to put in tackles anywhere. Estupinian coming in with the, with the pace, with the desire to chase people down constantly, always getting past them with his pace, which was lovely to see. And that lasted for like 92 minutes, as you guys could see. And then I would say... In the midfield, I wasn't impressed with Guimaraes or uh, Mayer. None of them really impressed me. But in the attack, I would have to say that Tammy is a special, special player. Guys, we've done it. Newcastle United have won the Champions League trophy. I'm telling you right now, at some point in the future, this might actually happen. With the money and the funds they have, if they bring up the right strategists into the club, they could pull this off. Richest club in world football now, Newcastle United. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you all. We'll catch you on the next one. <coughs> Take care and peace.